Folks, how are we doing this morning? We got a really interesting and unique program for you today. We're going to have a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to meet with uh, Andy Samson, and he's the archivist here at the museum. And we're down here today in the catacombs. The uh, here's Katie. Keith. Mr. Keith, how are you doing this morning? Doing fine. Good morning. We got a lot of real interesting things to talk about today. Should sure. be a great program. We've got uh, Greg Arnold, of course, joining us, and Andy's the archivist here. We have the music from the Road Crew, RoadCrew66.com. We got all kinds of great things to talk about today. Fu funerals for prostitutes, parrots. We've got uh, some historic mysteries. We've got an anniversary to talk about. Rosie Ramos, how are you doing this morning? What do you think? This is the uh, catacombs. The Mojave Museum of History and Arts is just an absolute gem. And uh, the archives, the uh, photograph photographs. The uh, archives here that Andy kind of a super oversees is uh, one of the best in the state. They have a tremendous photo collection of not just uh, Kingman but Arizona, Route 66, uh, in the surrounding area. So we're going to have a little bit of fun this morning. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. There's Mr. Greg Arnold. So what, um, and there's Andy right so there. So is this stuff going to end up going up there eventually? Or is good morning, yeah, Louis. Yeah. There's everybody. Mr. Morning, Jim. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Hope you're warm. Warm is good, especially for Jim Urban, who's watching this this morning from Iowa. The idea is to... We, we don't want to... Make it interesting. Well, but then the exhibits committee sit there and says, well, why worry about it? Because 90% of the people only see the ones I'm in there. So the bus is coming. They have never seen anything what's up topside anyway. So, yeah. so how are you doing this morning, Jim? You know, every, every day is good, my friend. Some days are just, they're just better than others. Gooder than others. Gooder than others. God, I like that. Does that work? It is now. That's right. You know, go in Webster's dictionary. Somebody's dictionary. Yeah. So, Mr. Andy, you've got all kinds of goodies for us. Yes, we morning. do. And you went through hell and high water to find this. And I'm not sure that is the one I was looking for, but. <laughs> well, this has got a great story. I got it. I mean, this is this is wonderful. You got a. You've got to tell us about this. Well, there's a little write up right there. What is that? Rest in peace, Polly. Oh, poor Polly. <laughs> Polly was a parrot owned by Blackjack, a local prostitute oh. that worked in the area of Kingman called the Rabbit Patch. Oh. Hey, well, Polly died. <laughs> and they actually, this was actually in the cemetery that was downtown at the time where the football field is now. So, I hear an echo. <laughs> anyway, it's... Was there a more ornate stone? I noticed there's other, other uh, you know, we have the other little pieces here. That, go, that went on top of it. This was on... Uh, if you see the picture there, Jim, behind you, it kind of... Here's some scorpions. Oh. And where the, the rabbit patch was down on uh, Beale Street, right? On, around Beale and I First? I think, yes, First and Beale. What's there now, Jim? Uh, 
Let's see, was it the Mojave County Agricultural? It could be. There's right in that area. Yeah, it's a government office now. How fitting. <laughs> why, why does that seem I'm, appropriate? I'm not going to get involved there. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. That sounded that that was perfect right there. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about uh, uh, if anybody's watching and has an idea on this one on uh, Topeka Street and uh, First Street or uh, South Front Street. South Front Street. When when was the transition? And you had it kind of pegged around 52, 53. Depends on who you talk to. I've had people that actually have been here all their lives. I don't want to say they were in the 1800s, but a long time. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, well, they were born here, and it was Topeka at that time. Well, I'm not going to say anybody's wrong. Oh, Lord, they're Mr. Chilco. Well, you know, accusing, Dave, you can't really... Come in, Bob. You don't want to tell people that they're wrong, but, you know, it's like the, the Oatman... Clark Gable honeymoon story. You just the way I approach that is, uh, if they did stay there, it was a damn short honeymoon. Just a little overnighter. No. Yeah. Actually, no. I would say just to consummate the marriage. Uh, <laughs> well, it was known that he gave a brief interview to. I'm sure it wasn't television back in '39, but at seven o'clock the next morning in Hollywood. Oh, wow. Okay. So, like I said, it was a very short one. <laughs> I guess so. Yes, Clark Gable did spend a lot of time in Oatman. He was quite the gambler. Well, in some of the old mines, they actually had gambling, believe it or not. They would set a table in there, and they would go in there and drink their soda pop and play nickel ante or whatever it is they played at the time. Well, he was known to be come up and gamble with the boys. Well, yeah. but as far as him spending the night, I his honeymoon, I unless someone can prove me wrong, which I've only seen two people prove me wrong, and then I found out one of them didn't. But I, I just don't think so. I mean, well, some of the little things that you have here at the museum, and you know, we were talking about that this museum, the Mojave Museum of History and Art, is not only a, a, a you know. A wonderful museum all the way across the board, but uh, the archives here, the library, and that you kind of oversee is probably one of the best in the state for photographs and information and documents. But some of the things I've noticed here this morning, you know, I get to looking down here like this, you know, it's a little thing, but this is, uh, man, that speaks volumes. You look at how this was manufactured and made, that's pretty darned astounding. Uh, Riveted together, you know, together, mm -hmm. iron rivets. It's a two piece pick handle, a uh, two piece pick head, and it's got a shoulder on it to prevent breakage of the handle. And everything here, believe it or not, does have a story behind it. Oh, gosh, I, I can imagine. Well, I shouldn't say, I'm hoping everything in here has a story behind it. <laughs> I was like looking at old things and uh, picturing who was using it and who was, you know, driving it or operating it. What were they, yeah, what, what, what were they wearing? What were they, you know, did they get there on a horse and then they went to work, let's say, with this machine, whatever that, what is this machine? It's a label machine. A label machine, yeah, so, like, uh, how old is this? I don't have the info. We, like, you know, if we had the computer down here available, we could look it up. Oh, yes. like, roughly, yes, probably the 30s. Dated. 30s. So people were wearing, you know, Art Deco type clothes and looking at the magazines, thinking like the newest things are, you know, all that all that type of style. And yeah. so it's just very interesting. Andy, I'll bet you that's a lot older. That's probably back in teens or twenties well, even. We oh, wow. Old telephone switchboards. Well, you got one people over here. I don't even know what that is. This is one right here that's pretty sick. Is the one out of the Brunswick Hotel. Yeah. That's pretty neat. If Werner gets the hotel back up, I guess that should be probably on display down there in the lobby. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. It's a beautiful piece of workmanship. That cabinetry even is, is Millennials pretty... wouldn't even know what it is. You don't know what a lot of things are. <laughs> you know, well, gosh. but that's like us. You know, we talk about the young, youngsters not knowing about some of these things, but... I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and that's, that's what's good about your show and about going to a museum, because you get a chance to, to learn these things, that these parts of history that, that were captured, and then you get a chance to see it. And, uh, well, what we're trying to do, help it go on. let's say the, the next stop of, or the next phase of bringing the museum up into the 21st century, <laughs> is we're going to put uh, QR codes on everything. Oh, this we could just click it. So with you can phone. click it, and it will have the story of the item. And we want to do that because so many people we get a lot of foreigners, and they can click on it with their little iPad, and automatically it will transfer the information into their own language. Dynamite! That's a great idea. You know, another thing that a lot of the museums are doing that could be done with things like this is uh, uh, hands-on, interactive stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a great museum over in El Segundo, California, and what you mentioned about the millennials and the younger audience, not uh, they were worried about not having an interest in the antique cars, the older cars. So on Sunday, you pay an extra $5 or so, and they have five cars out of the museum outside, and they take you for a ride. Oh, and it could nice. be everything from a rumble seat in a Model A, 1905 Cadillac, might be a pacer. <laughs> and they took you for a ride. And that's so hilarious. No, no, and why not? So can they do that here? Well, wouldn't it be great if we did that with like Scott Dutton's place and used old 66 National Trails Road, 4th Street out towards the uh, mm. to the park. Oh, yeah. Doing those yeah. Model Ts. Wow, yeah. you could give yeah. tours in those. Well, that could be the same thing with <laughs> Josh's group over there with the electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. He could have one of them outside and you go for... Well, even, a, you know, uh, an electric vehicle shuttle Willie service. Wilson's golf cart. An electric vehicle shuttle service downtown in the, the historic district. I know that uh, Roderick has some uh, like Toyota electric Toyota Rav fours over there. Oh wow! And uh, we, I was talking to Roderick. He's in Croatia right now. We were talking. He's uh, got some leads on very very early electric buses, and that'd be, that'd, be, <laughs> wow. that'd be another way to take this to another level. But but having things like this, like a label maker, where a person could use this with, with supervision, showing them how you make a label. Yeah, that would be great. So it's not just uh, not just static. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've noticed in the last really 50 years is we we don't really have a craftsman trade. We have craftsmen like you, but it's not working in a factory anymore. Right. So whoever ran something like that, they don't exist anymore because they passed on. So you would have to. You'd have to learn it and then yeah. teach it. Teach it. But you know, well, I'll tell you, there's definitely an interest in something. When you mentioned the Model T, uh, the Model T is not something you just jump in and drive. I mean, it's it's a different animal entirely. And there's enough interest now. The Gilmore Auto Museum, uh, they were really surprised. They started an auto, a Model T driving school. And uh, they had they had kids that were just getting their driver's license, but they've been inundated with people who had an interest in doing that. Oh, wow, that's a great driving, idea. Learning to drive a Model T. Well, <laughs> that's that's the other thing, too. Most millennials don't even have a driver's license because they don't want to drive. No responsibility. Yeah, but well, with the new, the new driverless automobiles, you got to have a driver's license. Wow, there's a, who's listening to answer that question? <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's an interesting story right there. I suppose if you're going to be taking the wheel, you're going to have to. But uh, no, now they're coming out with the wheelless though. Yeah. I'm not sure about that one. No. This could change yes. the whole sure. the whole thing of drinking and driving. And <laughs> well, you may want to emphasize too. Right? We do have some coors over there. That's no been there like when that was brought in. It's been there a while. You got some just neat stuff. I just was walking around and looking at things. World, there's, you know, World War II Japanese helmets on the shelf over here, and. Uh, just all kinds of little treasures. Of course, the upstairs is filled with little treasures, but this is uh, the, the catacombs, King Tut's tomb. <laughs> well, one thing we are going to do with the museum now, if you walk in between the auditorium and the library, you see all that, that walkway there has got a bunch of dishes in it that belong to Amy Neal, I think. Uh -oh. We're going to completely have uh, Marty Kobal do that all in turquoise. Oh, wow. Oh, That'd be fantastic. He, wow. Each piece of turquoise, each group, maybe in a group, I'm not sure, We'll have a story. This kind of turquoise here is whatever kind of turquoise it is. I don't know anything about it, but he's going to pretty well take that and it'll all be turquoise in there with a story. You know, he has so much historic turquoise. If right. you've been to the uh, to their shop, 
oh my God, it, it's unbelievable. Just ask him if you could go in the back. He has all these showcases set up. So if he does that here, yeah. just move them here. I mean, because these, these pieces are incredible from all over the world. And that may but, be what he has in mind. You know, like ancient turquoise carvings of little figures and turtles. And well, stuff. We have a bunch Very of stairs that was done. Nice. Yeah, do you know, no, this is something I've never talked to my, the Cobalt family about, but I know the turquoise mine up at Mineral Park, uh, the story was that that had been, the natives had been mining that for hundreds and hundreds of years before we ever got here. Well, I don't know why not. Yeah. Well, I know there was one guy here I just ran across through the old papers that owned a bunch of land out in that area, like five acres, and he used to give you permission, you had to buy a ticket, go on his land and pick turquoise, and you were guaranteed X amount of turquoise. Well, if you didn't find any, he would see that you did buy it, you know, see that you did. <laughs> so here you go. A pound or five pounds. <laughs> salt it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was... This is painted. <laughs> this is long before Duval and, you know, uh, L.W. Hardy and all of them. Oh yeah, Ed Edgerton used to do a bit of that up there at camp. That was my, my first job was working for Ed Edgerton. Yeah. Nice. I wish I was a bit older because I could have learned a lot. I, I learned some great four-letter words and profanities and other things, <laughs> much to my mother's dismay. But, and uh, how to hold your liquor. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Ed was, uh, Ed was a, a cult character. Did you ever meet Edgerton? No. No. The great stories about how Kingman has changed, the world has changed. We were talking about that earlier. But uh, with Ed Edgerton, I was talking to Roy Dutton before he passed, and he talked about uh, that Ed came in, and Ed wasn't known for uh, hygiene or, uh, you know, certain things that he just seemed like to be allergic to soap or whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, he was, a, he was a proverbial desert rat, and he came in and bought a new Chevy pickup off uh, Dutton. He wanted a six-cylinder, six-shift, just plain, basic truck. And uh, they came to a price, they haggled over it, and then... Uh, uh, Ed Edgerton just grabbed a grocery sack and tore a piece off of it and wrote on there, pay to the order of Roy Dutton, X number of dollars, paid for the truck in full. And Roy says, I can't accept that. And Ed told him, he says, well, call the bank. And the bank says, yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So we're glad to have people in here. We, we just had a guy in here last week, I think it was. He's doing research on High Jolly. First one ever ran into this one. And he was, I found out, according to him, High Jolly actually lived in Kingman, and he rented or sold camels. Here in Kingman? He swears by it. I cannot find that, but the guy that was doing the research said he came upon it. Well, that's, uh, I don't know. I don't know either. But you know what that goes to show you? One thing that I'm smart enough to, to with the one, like when I do research for books, I, I realize the more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. It's, Isn't that it's, the truth? Because yeah. it's, it's, there's always something new out there. Well, when I went to school, I thought history was the class you went to to take a nap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we ran into, and then another guy come in, and he was doing research on the observatory they had here. He's from the High Desert Astronomy Club out in Valley Vista. Well, we didn't get it, obviously. They did the research here, and it went to... Like that? You know, went to uh, U of A. Uh, Kip Peak. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, yes. Tucson. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tucson. Yeah. The Kingman has had so many brushes with fame and fortune. It's just been really quite astounding. And it's still happening now. There's yeah. there's stars who come through here, in the, uh, notable dignitaries in whatever mm -hmm. field they're in. It's pretty. We, we had a question about uh, the Pamela Anderson incident. Oh yeah. And uh, she was here. Well, yeah, well, she was here, but. The the, the uh, so-called indecent exposure incident didn't yeah. really happen on on Fourth Street, Fourth uh, and Annie Divine. It was up at a gas station up the street. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, I think that's where. But her sentence is she had to write a letter of apology. Well, that's Which, what you whether get. Whether she did or not, I don't. Know. That's what you get when you have Playboy in town. They think they can get away with anything. Well, there's, I just every day I find out something like. We were talking about the movies made in the area. It seemed like every other day I find out a new movie. I just found out about one film in Chloride called Rebel Rouser with Jack Nicholson. It's one I never knew about. Hmm. And 
As soon as it starts up, you can get it on YouTube, it starts up, and it says Jack Nicholson, hold us to start, and the people of Chloride, Arizona. So learn something all the time. Oh, I, you know, I, I just, you know, so many things. Uh, I've been working on a project uh, writing about the uh, Desert Classic races, the 1909 to 1914 races. Uh, Louis Chevrolet, Barney Oldfield, you know, came, and of course came through Kingman. But uh, apparently there was a question where Louis, Louis, Louis Chevrolet's car might have been sabotaged. Somebody put water in the gas tank instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of gasoline. Oh, wow. And, That's okay. I mean, years ago, you know, they had the great foot race that went through Cayman. Yeah. In fact, uh, one of the pictures you have here, uh, when I was going through and getting uh, the photos together for the walking tour, well, we talked about Chadwick Drive, that, uh, you know, this would be Route 66 going around there. Well, the Bunyan Derby photos were kind of a scarcity. And uh, one of the pictures that you have was labeled uh, something else, and I need to get with you on that, but it's the Bunyan Derby racers on Chadwick Drive. Oh, wow. And that's that's a real, you know, real rarity right there. Um, you know, there's so many different things. And um, on the 27th, I'll probably be doing another walking tour downtown through the Promote Kingman Initiative, tied in with uh, ribbon cutting down at uh, Southwest Trading Company for Sarah Elizabeth. And uh, she's awesome. Doing you know some of those things and trying to increase some awareness down there, but. What's, you've been down through here quite a lot. What's some of your favorite things down here, Andy? You want to show us? Or? Where do we go with that story, huh? <laughs> you know, I have been through this so many times. That, but I like just even in the turquoise. We have so much turquoise down here. And I don't even know. I wouldn't know where to start. If, if I had my wish, we would have more of it upstairs. But... Mm -hmm. We're small, yeah, and we can't show everything. How often do you rotate the stuff? Not near enough. I have been here for a few years, and I bet I have not seen a real rotation at all. Oh wow! Well. Because uh, if it gets rotated, it'll inspire people to keep coming back. Well, as we was talking, it will as far as the local, but so many people is <coughs> coming through here, like the bus tours. They don't care because of stuff they've never seen anywhere. So, it's if you rotate it, the chance of them coming back is probably pretty slim anyway. So, let's just say you had uh, you, you made it like an event. You're like October, you know, October every year. I'm just picking a month. Uh, we rotate everything in the museum. This way, everybody be like, oh my God, we have to go back to Kingman. Let's see what see what else they have. Instead of, oh, they, you know, I've seen that already. Been there, done that. Yeah, you know, I think that was supposedly what was supposed to happen. But You know, uh, here's a thought. You were mentioning that sometime this year the museum's going to have a 50th anniversary. I think the last of April. Well, you know, we could get that publicity going with that, and we could ask people what they would like to see on a, a weekend that uh, celebrates the museum's 50th anniversary and uh, maybe we could uh, get together and come up uh, with some new surprises for folks. I know a lot of the suggestions was let's stick to the pioneers. I don't know. So, but we've only just scratched dirt at this point. Yeah, because there's a lot more to King than just the, than just well, the was, pioneers. There's been just so many transformations. Yeah. yeah. It was just one. I want to do a slideshow of Central Commercial then, Central Commercial now. Right. That'd be, that's, see, now that's something people would be interested in. But right now, like I said, we just got the committee going last night. Good. And it's kind of, because we only got, what, two months. Oh, my God. Well, you had 49 years. We've had 49 years to plan it, but... Well, I wouldn't get in a hurry. <laughs> you can't rush into these things. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to rush in these things. And I'd wait, you know, like if you're going to do this on a weekend, I'd wait till like Friday. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, after like, dinner. Yeah. We don't know if it's going to be a weekend, if it's going to be the whole month. It may be for lunch. We don't really, like I said, why why push it? I mean, let's have one meeting. We'll have, we'll come up with all these answers. <laughs> right. Well, you can count me in, you know, if you want presentations get, or do something. We'll oh, do a, well, maybe walking tours downtown. I mean, that's a Merck, great idea. I'm going to have Merck get a hold of you guys. Because I sure enjoy telling folks where to go. And 
and how to get there. Yeah. Well, it's relatively simple. Directions are easy to give. You just tell people you head east long enough, you're out west. And if they're looking for yucca, you just point them west and tell them if you see the ocean, you've gone too far. <laughs> <You can't really. laughs> well, you know, it seems like we've got a lot of stuff here, but a lot of stuff through time <coughs> has come up missing. I'm very sorry to hear that. Yikes. We are too supposedly, when Ford Proving Grounds closed their doors, we got a semi load of stuff to be donated to the museum. Well, we couldn't put it all in here at the time, so they rented a facility downtown, uptown, wherever it was. Well, I guess it was broke into, and now we have just a few items. Oh, they're no good. Well, your archives here, your library, is one of the best I know of in the state. I was talking to Libby Sutton at the, the uh, State uh, Archives Historic Society, and she said that you have one of the best uh, photo collections in the state here. I think we have, mm -hmm. what, 15,000? Yeah, that's right around there. I've seen only a, a selection of it. Because I keep going back and looking. Uh, nice. You're going to so much. I just learned something. Maybe tell us. Clark Gable attended the gunnery school here. No. I know he did in Florida. But no. He was told no. that he also went to the gunnery school. No. Um, because as soon as he got done with gunnery school, they got him over to Europe, and he was in Europe most of the time. What um, what celebrities did we have out there? Now, I understand Clayton Moore. Clayton Moore, yes. And uh, let me... Charles Bronson. Well, Charles Bronson. Let me, let me go back to Clayton Moore. Clayton Moore, if you go by the newspaper account here, the minor, he was here for gunnery school. And I think he did do that. But I got a hold of his biography, and he tells a different story. Now, the, the reason why he went out and got his biography, I had a guy come into the Airfield Museum and say, you tell a pretty good story, but you need to read his bio. And I said, okay, I will. Because he said, you need to read it. So I read it. He came out here because he already had like 10, 12 movies under his belt. So he, he was already... You may tell him who Clayton Moore is. Oh, we have Old Ranger, <laughs> I.O. Silver, Away. And uh, he, was, he was already doing cowboy movies. I think eight of the movies he did were cowboy. So he was a C or B movie person at that time. <clears throat> so he came out... And he actually was in the social part of the base. He took care of uh, morale and that. So he had to bring in certain acts to do the entertainment. So wow, that's what cool. he was here for. We've got so many things, you know, they, of course, uh, that's your passion and your knowledge sphere is the Kingdom Army Airfield, which that needs to be developed more as an attraction and preserve the history. And uh, we've got some locations here in Kingman that are really rare. Um, the World Monuments Fund recently did a study on Route 66 properties, and uh, uh, authentic Route 66 motels are almost at the top next to the bridges. Bridges right now are the most endangered, and then the Route 66 motels and auto courts, the old-fashioned pre-war auto courts with the garages, are some of the most rare properties on Route 66 and most endangered. And then we can extrapolate that with uh, properties that were listed in the uh, Green Book for the Negro Motors. And in Kingman, the old White Rock Court is an authentic auto court from the 1930s, plus it was listed in the Green Book for Negro Motors. So it's an extremely rare property. And uh, that's another amazing. one worthy of good restoration. Still sits there. Yeah, that's one that should be given attention for, for given a new life. Right, yeah. yeah. But it goes back. As I told you, the almighty dollar, you know. Oh, yeah, it's always, yeah, the dollar is a big part of this. There's a, a group I met with uh, some people the other night here, gave them a tour downtown, we were photographing Neon. They're starting a project called Revive 66, and uh, they've got some pretty powerful marketing people on board, and uh, we facilitated, they're going to be talking with the uh, Route 66 Road Ahead Initiative, because um, 
tying this and bringing some of this stuff back to life and finding the funding to, to, to do some of this stuff. Mr. Greg, what do you got on the platter right now? What are you working on besides stirring up mischief? And oh, yeah. You, you were out in Yucca, but what else you got going? Oh, uh, well, there's uh, my friend Rick Hildner is coming to town. I mentioned it last week, and he's a, he does props and fabrications for tons of movies. Oh, uh, Hellraiser 4, Alien vs. Predator, Power Rangers, Fifth Element. He uh, made uh, the uh, designed the miniature uh, for the uh, for the Harry Potter ride that they ex ex extrapolated from there and made the actual ride in Disneyland. Mm -hmm. He, uh, G.I. Joe toys, I mean, all kinds of stuff he makes and designs. He's going to be here for a few months, uh, staying over at my studio, and we're going to do some really incredible things, like all all types of amazing things. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. We talked about ideas. Um, even up to yesterday, because the things he does are just, you know, beyond, just beyond everything. He's done things at uh, MGM Grand, you know, he makes like, you know, the giant rocks and waterfalls and you know, whatever you can think of. So he's going to be here and that's going to be a nice Hollywood connection. And so we're creating history now and everybody out there can do the same thing. Create history now because yeah. it, at one time it will be history. Be like, yeah. oh yeah, back then so and so did this. So let's be the people that do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's before we wrap this up, do you want to walk around and show us some of this stuff? Yeah. yeah. No. You know one thing <coughs> we're Problem. developing right now. <laughs> we call it a, uh, a miniature out. room. <laughs> it's called a miniature room. We actually have two dollhouses upstairs. I mean, these are fabulous. I couldn't believe anybody would sit there and do them. I, I wouldn't have the patience. Oh, it's, a, it's an absolute art form. Oh, they, yeah, I mean, yeah, they it's have, incredible. They have working lights. Like Willem Bohr. Everything. With his miniatures of the Route 66. Right, uh, right. Buildings. Absolutely yeah. incredible. What a loss it was that we, uh, problem, we don't have him. Problem, but anymore. it's not a problem. I mean, they're beautiful. Yes. But we really can't it doesn't fit into history, though. I mean, it's just stuff that people haven't wanted to donate them, and they're they're neat, but they don't you know, stay find with the, the Mojave history. We could find a place, though. You know, it's just like we did with the Villain Boar models. Uh, they were incredible. We were gifted two of these, and they really, you know, like Mr. D, the Mr. D's model, it's not really historic, but, I mean, it's such an art piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to show it. Yeah. And we are, but... So anyway, but, uh, yeah, you, I get what you're saying. It, it doesn't really have Mojave County history, but the the texture of the piece has that old west feel. Right. Well, like one of them, a lot of the pieces there was done by a local woman. Well, then you know that kind of ties in. Right, because she's part of the yeah. history of Kingman. But anyway, they're fabulous. You ought to go up there and take a look at them. Where are they at? Well, there were, we always called it the old Andy room. And they were doing it right now. You want to show us? Yeah, I'll show you when we go up there. Sure. And how would everybody feel about a, uh, if, if we made like a, not a museum really per se, but a little showroom of uh, Hollywood props? Oh, yeah. Because uh, Rick had just given me, because he has so much stuff and he has access to everything. I have a, uh, right over at my studio, a stool, this really cool stool that was used in the Captain Hook movie, uh, a gong that was from the Mutiny on the Bounty, a uh, uh, props from uh, Planet of the Apes and Captain America movie. Like, so what if we set something up where the people could go and see those? Uh -huh. You know, like, you know, a yeah. lot more than that, though. <laughs> it's, we can take a little while. Five things. We'll see how this works, guys. If we lose you, well, you apologize, but let's give this a try and follow Andy. <laughs> well, I don't know what most of this stuff is. Make this it up. A, this isn't really... I could do that. Yeah. Oh, this I'm not going to say it used to be in my house, though. <clears throat> most of the stuff you're seeing here, <clears throat> excuse me, are props. And we may have an exhibit going up there, and we want to add a few props to it. We got clothing. Actually, we got naked people over here in the corner. Pretty close, then. And we still have 
I don't know if anybody remembers when the street that connects Beale Street and Annie Devine was named the street. You still got the information on that? Oh, wow. How funny. We've got uh, uh, somebody's coffin here. <clears throat> And the old fronts of who was talking about the post offices. Yes. This is uh. And I do not know who's coughing. Yeah. I might be able to use that, but I hope it's not for right to let me on for a while. There is uh, got a couple of stones in there. I assume from well, it's the Black family. We'll have to look this wagon over sometime. I'm curious to see if it's a. This Surrey is a Studebaker built. And this was part of the original AAA. It was owned by Mr. Glancy. And that sign over there with all the heads, I think that's about the only thing we really ended up with from the Fort Proving Grounds. Oh, that's really a tragedy. Why do we have so many pianos? I don't know. We have quite a few of them upstairs that do work. The old player pianos and everything. And we have one of the ugliest Santa Clauses over here. Yes, I noticed that. That's a... Uh, have an uh, ugly Santa Claus contest. Old cash registers. I think one of them actually come in from the simple commercial. Wolfgang, good morning. Hey, Scott. Uh, this is what I was talking to you about, the... Uh, Central commercial racks from the uh, from the trucks there. Scott Dutton uh, has just acquired a really neat 1922 uh, double T truck. Yeah. And we have so many things that it's in boxes. I just want to show this. Uh, this uh, this is the uh, switchboard from the Brunswick Hotel. That's really pretty slick right there. This is kind of a, I know it's not in the best shape. I love some of the different things they did with radios. It's pretty neat. And uh, Tim Woods was talking about some of the uh, really great historic saddles that you have here. He's uh, was telling me he's eager to help and restore a few of these. Uh, who was, whose saddle was HBI? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I said if we had the computer, we could, sure. you know, call it up. <laughs> I say that, and we'll go upstairs and look at it, and it won't tell us, but... What was that? The old miner sign. Which the miner had different names. Mojave County Miner, the Mineral Health. Um, so many. That's a gold slip Is that... Right yeah, it's a dry washer. And we have pots and pans for the wives. Thanks. <laughs> you got quite a, quite a collection down here. Well, we try to keep everything at the early calculator. Had some value. And here, I want to show you something. This is something that. Well, I tell you, maybe. but you know, uh, people really need to come down. The Mojave Museum of History and Arts is really, really a wonderful museum. And I'll do a walk around video sometime. Uh, I'll go up and I'll just do a whole walk through the museum to kind of tease them a bit. But uh, it is really. Uh, it's, it's, well, you know, outside we actually have a mine out there you can walk through. You know, you have a jail. You can go to jail and get your picture taken in it. Well, you know, one of the things that just came to my mind, and being a museum person, uh, Grants, New Mexico, has a great mining museum. And what they did with their basement, they had a basement similar to this, and uh, uranium mining was the big thing there. And they have actually turned it into a, 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 a full mine shaft. You go down like a pretend elevator, and they, they have an old miner that used to work in the mines. And he uh, walks you through it, and they had the stopes, everything downstairs. This was a calculator. <laughs> 
not like the ones now, but oh my gosh, no. Now, a lot of people don't realize what this little gadget is right there. Now, you know, I've used that sedan many times, a toaster. For campfires. Yeah, for, on the wood stove, yeah. too. Put, put them up on the old stove. Now, you notice there's different. I was going to say, I don't know what this is down there, because I'm not sure, but I think this is my wife's. You think that's your wife's, huh? actually a railroad light. Yeah. Railroad light. These are railroad lights. Mm -hmm. Around here, those are... But you were talking about the Japanese helmet. Yeah, Japanese helmets. Padlocks. Wow. And this is how... It your wife used to do your shirts. Mm -hmm. And those are tools Ooh. used by the three students. What do we too. got here? Uh, this is a little engine. Oh, that's yeah. quite, a, quite a little deal. My dear. Greg, I can't make up a story for that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make something up. And there's a giant head behind it. A steam engine, though, Arthur. Yeah. My dad like, made me a little steam engine like that. He was a machinist. And, but that's really a slick. Mm -hmm. You look here, at some of this and... Here's, this is for your uh, welding. Yeah. Oh, your tips. Yeah. Yeah. Model T, your coil boxes for Model T Ford. Yeah. Uh, the black box with Edison on it is a uh, recording machine. Let's see, we saw that right back here. This one. This would be uh, probably late, uh, this is yes. a, uh, yes. late 19th century uh, uh, dictaphone yeah. this is using uh, wax Polish. cylinders. Yes. Holy cow. Every time I come down here, I find something yeah. different. Wow. Know What's neat is, this is the first time I've ever seen one. Oh, that's that you know, I come down here so much, but I, you know, walk by it. And not really pay any attention. I wonder what some of the stories are, like these shoes. Well, I'm not sure this really has much to do with it. That looks like a snowshoe, and I'm not sure that has with Kingman, but... Yeah, I've got a set of handcuffs similar to this one. My wife's uh, grandfather, great grandfather, was the sheriff in Tombstone, Arizona. Oh my gosh! Oh no, this is an intriguing. Look at the little brass revolver right there, brass handle. Well, you know, upstairs talking about the revolver, we actually have the actual pistol that killed one of the local sheriffs at the time, Mr. Tar. Oh, we have that pistol upstairs with actually yeah, the spin yeah, up close. <laughs> oh, yeah, next to it. Yeah. That's on display upstairs. Yes. Yeah. Look at those coming. Yeah, or something. <laughs> well, gosh, this has been really great. And we have. <laughs> I was really surprised with everybody here. <laughs> Had no idea what. Uh, so ball mill. Yes. It's pulverizing the ore. You know, another thing we have quite a bit of that is really coming back into is the old rusty horseshoes. Yes. People are making designs out of them. In fact, Greg could probably tell you more about that. But I have seen welding them together, making Christmas trees out of them, uh, making crosses out of them. I'm not sure this was a railroad, but it was a pretty small train. Uh, probably uh, mine or car uh, would be my guess. My gosh, you guys, this really is fun. You know, I had an old, I got one of those old blacksmith forges like that. Uh, I found it up in the Surbat Mountains, and I made a barbecue out of it. Okay. Let me see a little. I didn't realize there were so many different kinds of barbed wire. There is a mu museum. Uh, it sounds boring. It sounds like something you would really uh, 
go to sleep in, but there's a museum in McLean, Texas. Uh, McLean, Texas was called uh, unofficially the uplift capital of America. They had the largest brassiere factory in America. And the old brassiere factory is now the uh, Route 66 Museum and Devil's Rope Museum. It's the world's largest collection of um, barbed wire, and it's got barbed wire yeah. sculpture and all kinds of different things. We have a little bit better display on the upstairs. I, just, I thought barbed wire was barbed wire. And upstairs we also have the tree stuff that grew around a rifle. Right. That was in Ripley's Believe It or Not, actually, at one point. And I have no idea what's in all these boxes. There is something in every box. <laughs> and we may not want to know what's in some of these boxes. Yeah. And we were going to give this to Jim Meekly to replace his, but he says, no, his is an antique. Well, I've got, to get, I've got to get my money's worth out of this one. I paid about uh, $20 for it about 30 years ago. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, coins, jewelry, maybe. Andy, this has been great this morning. I want to thank you for doing this. Well, next time we need to do one upstairs. I know you've done them. Well, let's see. We have start with the president's room and end up with the animal room. Well, how about in uh, two weeks, if you want, we'll come back and we'll do a walk through the museum. Next week, it looks like we're going to probably be at Luigi's. And then uh, two weeks, where? Luigi's. Oh, okay. Uh, Garibaldi's. I'm yeah. sorry, Garibaldi's. And, uh, okay, may I, we'll talk about it in about two weeks. Join us, and we'll, folks, we will do a uh, walkabout through the museum. Andy will, Andy will give us a guided tour. I can point. He can point. Guys, thank you very much for doing this. And folks, thanks for joining us this morning, and we'll have some fun again uh, next week. Oh, can I just say one thing, Jim? Yes, before, Mr. Gray. Before we hang up. Uh, I would like to let everybody know that in the February 2018 edition of Arizona Highways Magazine, uh, Gigantic Aestheticus is in there. And a full page. It's pretty neat. And yay! And also, uh, there's a magazine called Etched that has uh, cool springs in it and all kinds of really interesting things, but also Giganticus with the Antares Point uh, Route 66 Visitor Center. So if everybody could pick up those two magazines, that'd be fantastic. And while we're talking magazines, we should throw one more out there. Uh, Brennan Matthews has just launched a new magazine. should be out this month called Root. Oh. And it's about uh, Great American Road Trips. It's a really classy, glossy magazine. You want to push your thing down at the uh, Colorado River Museum? Uh, that's oh. on the 12th, right, Andy? Yes. And I'll be speaking down there on uh, 120 Years of Adventure on uh, Route 66, the National Old Trails Highway. And what's the, that's, that's the Colorado River Museum in Bullhead? Yeah. And when are you doing this? It's put on by the Colorado River Historical Society. Wow. And it'll be February 12th. Yes. 5.30 in the evening. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. And believe it or not, the church, well, the museum down there used to be the Catholic church down there that originated as part of a school, as I understand it, in Oatman. Oh, wow. So it was brought down by Merle Emery, another fellow. But Neat. So one of those tried to prove it. So we'll be doing that on the 12th. We're going to be back at the museum uh, in two weeks. And Andy's going to walk us through the whole museum upstairs. We wow. See what kind of things we can find. Because he's got us uh, in, intrigued with a, uh, a rifle stuck in a tree stump and uh, <laughs> a gun and used in a shooting and a few other things. We actually have a very nice rifle up here that it was brought to our attention. The sight was put on backwards. I don't know if that oh, means yeah. you can shoot yourself or not, but anyway. But we um, told them we weren't going to change it. <laughs> we, we, one thing we have to ask, in two weeks when we go through the museum... Do you have any exhibits from the uh, Pamela Anderson? No. Uh, see? <laughs> Sorry, folks. I have it underneath my bed at the house. It's called Playboy. But... Uh -huh. Guys, thank you for doing this this morning, and we'll see everybody uh, next week. Take care. See you. Well, you know, we...